Good evening. It's great to see many young ladies and gentlemen in this live talk for HKUST's Quantitative Finance Program. I'm today's MC, Jocelyn, and I'm also a Year 3 Quantitative Finance and Economics student. I'll accompany you in the coming hour for our well-prepared sessions. Nestor, may you brief us the rundown for today? Sure. I'm Nestor, another MC for today's talk, and I'm also a Year 2 Quantitative Finance student. The talk will kick off with an introduction of the QFIN program by our pro program coordinator, Professor Ekachai, and then followed by a panel discussion of Professor Ekachai and three senior QFIN students, who are Alexis, Thomas, and David. The theme of the discussion will include additional major declaration, further studies, career opportunities, the QFIN community, and admission. You may raise your questions by using raise hand function or type in chat during the section. The remaining time will be the Q&A section. Seems that we have a tight schedule today. So without further ado, may I now invite Professor Akachai to give us an overview of the Quantitative Finance Program. Professor, please. Okay, thanks, Jocelyn and Nesta. And good to see everyone uh, who joined us today and welcome to our info session. Let me share you my screen. You see my screen now? Okay, so uh, for quantitative finance program, let me have a brief introduction. So the flow of this info session is that I'm going to have maybe five to 10 minutes talk about this uh, program and also have some students introduce themselves. After that, we do Q&A, chit chat. Uh, if you have any question, please uh, type in the chat box. We're going to try to answer all of your questions in real time. Okay, so please uh, feel free to ask anything or just raise hand. And you can also unmute yourself. Just raise hand and then Mickey or Jocelyn or Esther will call you and you just say anything you want. Uh, okay, so... For our program, we have quite a long history. Uh, the size of the program is pretty small relative to many other programs. And it allows us to have good uh, kind of uh, networking within the program. Okay, so our students are very close to each other and our professor also know our students pretty well. We have students from various places such as uh, Indonesia, Korea, Taiwan, China, Hong Kong, uh, India. Um, okay, this is the curriculum part. So for our quantitative finance program, the way I view it is that we are the platform, right? Uh, that allow our students to choose the path that they want. And we have finance part, programming, data analysis, and quantitative skills. So, so for students who join us, they're going to have a basic idea about all these finance, programming, quantitative, mathematics, statistics, that kind of stuff. And if they want, they can dig deeper by declaring minor and additional major. So, and you can see that uh, right now we have 33 QFIN students declaring computer science. COSC is computer science. We have 33 students declare computer science as additional major. Uh, with this combination, right? QFIN, computer science, data science, mathematics, economics as additional major. Uh, I think you, you got to put yourself in a position that can take advantage of a lot of job opportunity in and outside Hong Kong and it's a, in a very high demand. So some students ask me, oh, if you study quantifying in HKUST, uh, do you have enough quantitative skill? So I think, let me put it this way. Uh, our student right now, after they finish from QFIN, if they want, uh, they can do further study. And right now, every year our student I think if I understand correctly, every year our students join MIT. And then from time to time, we also join uh, Carnegie Mellon and Princeton. So, and we have students who get PhD offer at Yale. So, I mean, uh, in terms of quantitative skill, I have no doubt that our students will be ready. 
Uh, let's move on to the next page. Oh, but before that, let me just emphasize on this. At UST, we give students flexibility. If they want, they can declare additional major across school as well. So if you want to have additional major in engineering, you could do it. If you want to do some additional major in social science, you can do it as well. Uh, so it depends on your ability. If you can handle it, uh, you, you should be able to do what you want. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, our students have a lot of success in terms of competition. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, in terms of activities, we provide plenty of, plenty of activities all year round. Um, and this is, this is happen, the, the thing that you see in front of you is happening every year. It's not like we, we include something that we didn't organize. It's not like that. Everything that we put in front of you, we organize every year at program level. Okay, when you add the school level and university level on top of this, basically you have a lot of activities all year round. Uh, for example, last night we just, Nikki and I, we just uh, did the career mentorship program. Uh, at Central, so our student probably maybe uh, almost 40 students. Uh, we match them with professional who are, um, some of them, they are the CEO. Some of them is the head of RIC. So some of them also the C chief investment officer. Some of them own the finance company. They are the mentor of our students. So there will be a lot of opportunities if you join us. Uh, Area opportunity in the past two years for the, the, the one who, who has just graduated from our program. Uh, basically, I would say that uh, pretty much everyone try to get a job in finance and they get what they want. And the kind of job they get is very good. And you can see from the list, if they decide to do further study, uh, they can go to those university. And we include everyone in the list. We don't really take some other names out. We include every names in, in this table. So you can have a complete idea about uh, the quality of our student and the career future and uh, of our students. So our students do a lot of internship. Uh, it's not that we give them internship. We don't really give internship to anyone. Our students have ability to find these internships on their own. I think that is very important. Okay, we, we are not advertising that, oh, we, we, we give internships to students. No, we never do that. But the better thing is that our students have ability to do on their own. So as a student or as a parent, I think that is the best thing you can do, right? Uh, have your own ability to succeed. And I think our program has a platform for you to prepare you for that. Um, there's a lot of big names here. I'm not sure you know uh, some of those names, but uh, we have very good placement here. Our student also take study leave to do various things. And you can see all the lists here. Uh, Mickey will post these slides on chat box so you can download it. You don't have to print screen anything. Uh, we, we are open about all this. Um, to take study leave, you do not have to do internship actually. You can uh, choose to be a visiting student at other university or you can choose to be volunteer. Just help some poor people or uh, just go to some country to build some school or some hospital, uh, or maybe you can run your own company and you can take study leave for any of those reasons. Uh, we're going to support you. Uh, we, we like it that our students try to explore new things. And that's it on my part. Uh, next, uh, I think our student will introduce themselves to you uh, before we have some kind of chit chat session. Okay, thank you, Professor, for your explanation. 
I hope all of you know more about the Giving program now, and we may go straight to the panel discussion to hear some personal sharing by students that are already spending their fourth year in the Giving program. And at the same time, Professor Agachai will be also with us in this section. Well, I'm really excited for this section, but wait, um, let's invite our student speakers to do a self-introduction first. Alexis, Thomas, and David, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, hi, I'm Alexis. I double majored in Cubing and math. I'm a year four student, and I'm very determined to do a PhD in statistics. Uh, USD is definitely a school to which I will apply, and the USD professors are extremely supportive, and they have plenty of resources to support your research. Uh, during my stay in USD, I have assumed lots of research assistant positions. I have participated in the USD's undergraduate research opportunities program and have my own publication. I also have conducted independent research under the supervision of a USD professor. So in a nutshell, as long as you're willing to be active, then there are lots of opportunities in USD and professors are always ready to help you. Thank you. Um, thanks, Alexis. So um, this is Thomas from um, year four. So this is my final year studying Kilvin, this program, this um, Kilvin program, and I'm gonna graduate in December. And to get, keep this short, because I wanna save more time for the Q&A session later. So I'm just gonna say that um, Kilvin is a really, really good program that, and thank you all for joining this meaningful info section. So feel free to ask anything um, later on. Okay, so I'm David, a year four student, just same as I, Alexis and Thomas. So I'm also a Cuban student, also having a second major in computer science and minor in mathematics. So if you have like these questions, you can just private message and ask me. Yeah, and we can go ahead to the next stage. Great, we can now start the discussion. And if you have any questions, please raise your hand and we will call you unmute yourself and ask questions, or you may simply put your questions in the chat. You can I think Nestor is not having a good Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, the last sentence should oh, be, you can also I... prompt your questions in a later Q&A session. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, so we can just start the panel discussion. Um, first of all, just now we have discussed what you can expect to study when you're admitted to the Kilvin program. And Professor Kachai had also mentioned that the possibility for double major. Professor, would you mind explaining why double major has gained so much popularity and is it hard to apply for that? Uh, okay, so first of all, let's see the, I, I, I look at looking at the chat box and we have a long question there. Mickey, please help us reply that, that message, okay? So we don't have to double work. We know exactly Mickey will help us reply. About the uh, additional major, I think uh, it's pretty popular now because um, there's so many opportunities in many areas. And like I mentioned earlier, the QFIN program is more like a platform to do what you want. Uh, if you want to, to be a little bit broader in the sense that you want to know more about the business side, you can study more about the, 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 the course at the business school. But if you want to be more like a specialist, for example, just like Alexis and David, you can choose to be specialized in maybe mathematics, statistics, and David specialized in computer science. So our QFIN student, everyone, if they want to, they, they should have enough ability to do any of those. So it just depends on what they want. And it's happened to be that now there's so much opportunity in uh, FinTech and maybe some uh, hedge fund industry asset management that required a lot of analytical skill. So we see that students do more computer science double major. Uh, so, and it's be become very popular right now. And uh, the career prospect of students who have double major in, in the subject that is in demand from the industry is, uh, is very attractive. So, so maybe David and Alexis can also mention a little bit about why it benefit you to do double major? Mm, sure. 
uh, the reason for me applying for math as additional major is that I like math very much and I want to do a PhD in statistics because if you're applying for graduate school, especially for research oriented programs in math, then you will need to hold a bachelor degree in math. However, if you only care about jobs in the industry or want to do a PhD in finance, then having a single QV major is already good enough. If you are interested, very interested in other disciplines and have enough time to do it, then I cannot think of any reason why you should not do an additional major. Because as Professor Agacha have already said, the QV department is really supportive. If you want to apply for additional major and they will just approve it as long as your timetable shows that uh, you can finish it within four years. So you don't need to do another interview or write a personal statement for the additional major application. And another benefits of holding additional major is that you can enroll in additional major courses easily. That is because math is a very popular subject and there will be lots of students uh, waiting in lines for some of the math courses. However, if you have additional major in math, then you can almost guarantee it you can enroll in any math courses that you want to take due to the reserved quota policy. And even if you have additional major in math, your workload actually will not be that heavy. That is because there is an overlapping math courses between the QV and uh, math curriculum. So before David uh, speaks a little bit more about this, uh, let me emphasize that if you do not want to have double major, it is okay, you don't have to do it. Uh, a lot of our QFIN students get very good career, even with QFIN major alone. Okay, so, so in fact, double major just become popular in the past two or three years. Before that, almost none of the QFIN students do double major. So double major is more like an option. It's not a requirement, but we want to talk about it because so many people don't know that. Uh, QFIN student can do double major, but actually we can. So that's why today we, we focus a little bit on this issue. Okay, so for me, basically, I did not plan to do any further studies, but I think like having a second major in computer science like greatly like broaden my opportunities. Like in my last internship, I'm doing like quantitative trading. I need to do quite a lot of coding, like research, kind of stuff and like for computer science type of knowledge really helps a lot and i see like in the chat box there are some students asking about computer science stuff so for the first one like applying second uh, computer science as a second major do not require you to have like any background any prior background in high school for example so for me my first like courses or like I studied uh, programming just in my year one. So I think like it's perfectly fine if you don't have any prior background and like the application is like not too difficult. Basically you need to like just take one or two courses and show that you're like enthusiastic to it. You're like pretty good to it. And then just apply to the professor they will basically accept it. And is there any, okay, there's another question. What does computer science do? Basically, at the first stage, you would like learn some basic programming languages, for example, say Python, C++, whatever. And then like to the more advanced level, you would know a bit more about the computer architecture, like how does computer really work? Maybe you also like learn about some advanced algorithms or like uh, more like, hot topic, say AI, machine learning, whatever. Yeah, basically this is what we learn. Yeah, okay. Thank you for sharing. And I also see a question about, um, can students take uh, an additional major in marketing or economics? Um, for me, I'm actually a year three student taking quantifying and econ. Um, I actually uh, choose my major quantitative finance in my year two, and I choose the additional major of economics uh, just before my third year. So uh, I think it's really possible, like what Professor Akachai mentioned, uh, the Cuban program gives us a lot of flexibility. So if you want to know additional skills like me, I would like to learn about the social science or the behavioral type of business. So um, the courses I take for finance and econ are actually um, very well matched for each other that I can learn more 
about the curriculum. So since so many Cuban students are taking additional major, Thomas, would students like you that do not declare other additional majors feel less competitive? Or what are your pros or cons for not taking them? Um, thanks, Joyce Lin, for the question. Um, I would say that I would like to echo um, Akichai's point on whether or not to take additional major is not necessary at all. So I would say that for the QFIN program itself is already very competitive and already very demanding. So if you are admitted into this QFIN program, we already have enough courses for you to learn the basics um, in computer science as well as in finance. So it's really not necessary for yourself for, for you to um, try to declare an additional major. So I would say um, the tips is to, to try to find out your true capacity. So if you think you can manage to study one more major or one more um, minor, then you can try to pursue that. But if you think um, the QVIN courses are already enough for you, to, to learn and to grow, then obviously um, Kilvin is a good enough program for you to pursue, uh, pursue a good career. And so for myself, I would say that um, the disadvantage um, obviously would be if I compare myself to David, um, he would have more opportunities to work on some quant trading stuff. So for me, um, in my most recent internship, I actually did a sales role in, in a asset manager. So I can type the name here. You guys can Google it if, you, if you're interested. So this is the, the asset manager that I, I have just done an internship in during this past summer. So actually for many Cuban students, we did, we did not declare an additional major and we still managed to find really good internships. So it's perfectly fine. Okay, thank you. So apart from declaring double majors, most of our students would go abroad for exchange programs. Also some Cuban students who decide to take further studies like master degree after the undergraduate studies. Professor, what do you think the QVIN program can support and assist them in finding the dream schools? I think uh, with the UST name, um, applying for further study is not that difficult at all. And you can see in the PowerPoint slide that I showed you earlier, our students who graduate from QFIN, they when they apply for graduate study, they go to only top programs. Uh, and when I say top, it really means really top. MIT, uh, Princeton, uh, Columbia, LSE, uh, Carnegie Mellon, Chicago, UC Berkeley. So we usually don't really go out of this kind of range. Uh, and our students get very good placement in terms of further study. I think it is because uh, we have good track record and those our QFIN students who, who study in those programs, they did very well after graduation. So those programs seem to like us, in my opinion. Uh, our students have good technical skills and also quite well-rounded because we, we give a lot of kind of opportunity for our students to develop uh, several dimensions that is required to be successful in finance industry. So the, we, we study very hard, but at the same time, we, we try to develop some other skill as well, such as networking or communication. So, so I think that is why the, the master program in, in, in US and UK like our students. So Alexis, you mentioned that you're planning to pursue a PhD degree. So can you share more uh, about this and how is it going now? Yeah, sure. I would say pursuing higher education is very common for QFIN students. And I agree with uh, Professor Agachai. Indeed, I have saw lots of QFIN seniors who end up in the MIT's uh, financial mathematics taught master degree. So for QFIN peers around me, my friends will continue to stay in the USD for is taught master program in financial mathematics. And speaking about myself, I don't have a very competitive grade compared to other QFIN students. Uh, I mean, very interested in statistics, but I didn't know which type of school I can get into. So I asked for help from some USD professors and they went through my profile and they, should, they suggest I apply for USD and the top 30 statistic PhD programs in the US. 
So USD professors are always being very nice and they have provided me a lot of academic and emotional support while I'm preparing, uh, preparing for my PhD application. In fact, there are lots of information resources that you can use in the USD apart from seeking information from your professor. You can always make an individual appointment with a USD Korean Center tutor to discuss your graduate school application. And you can surely make appointments with our USD language tutor to help you revise your personal statement and CV. But if you are not sure if you will apply for graduate school or not, it is perfectly fine. Some of our uh, my QVIN friends also don't know what they want to apply for a master until they worked in the industry for a while. So you may have a thought on it and then keeping exploring different options in the USD because I think for years, university should be a time for you to find out different possibilities. You don't have to settle everything that quickly. In fact, USD has a very flexible curriculum and course of design to support both your academic and career path. Um, yeah. Hey, so uh, can you, any of you share where did you visit during your exchange semester, if you have exchanged? Like, how did the experience enrich you in terms of academics and life? Okay, sure, I will start first. So uh, I would say Qfin is a really good platform that, that it has many, unif it offers you many different options as to which um, other university you would like to visit or to, to exchange during your penultimate year or, or during your year two. And so for, for myself, I've chosen to visit um, UK Warwick University in my second year, oh, third year actually. So, but it was kind of unfortunate that I, I faced COVID at that time and, and the entire program was cut into half. So I was forced to come back in March last year. And, but I think after one or two years, everything will resume like norm, normally. So you guys can still visit the best schools in US or in UK. So it's, it all depends on how, how well you do in your interviews as well as, um, um, frankly, the GPA that you have at that time. So just try, try your best to study hard and you will get to any school you, you like. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. I'm also going planning to go for an exchange in the coming spring and I hope that would be great. And I also saw some question about um, the first year classes on economics or uh, BFS. Um, actually, uh, for economics, uh, our school divided students uh, who have studied economics and who didn't study economics into two classes, so they don't have to really be worried about their prior knowledges. And for uh, accounting, um, students are put together, but uh, for my personal experience, I don't think um, for the year one courses are so difficult because in our curriculum we actually need uh, 120 credits to graduate and it includes common course which can include like uh, humanities social science and all kinds of courses and also a uh, business course which include uh, accounting marketing economics finance and all of them uh, many of them will be studied in year one with uh, students from all majors and the last one will be your major courses so if you are in the quantity finance program, you will probably start your major courses in year two. And for that time, you should have uh, enough basic knowledge from your year one courses. So uh, we have been revolving around academics. Let's switch a bit to a matter that I'm sure many uh, audiences here are curious to know. That's the career of a Cuban student. Professor, uh, as you mentioned that many students are actually going to the finance or banking field. Is it true that uh, they are very competitive and they earn very high salaries and what are the typical pathways for them? Mm. Okay, so the typical pathway, I think, uh, let's see, uh, maybe I share my screen. Can you see my screen now? So this is a typical pathway for our student. Uh, for oh, not that is a uh, finance. Let me find a new one. Oh, this is QFIN. Okay. So for QFIN, it will look like this. Um, our student will either get finance job, a real finance job, in financial firms, or go to top school. Basically, there are only two paths: get very good job in finance or go to top school. I don't see any other path. Uh, long time ago, there's some student, uh, uh, how to say, 
he's an entrepreneur. He set up his own company, but most of the students will work for top bank first before I do something else. Um, and whether it's competitive or not, and salary, how high it is, I think we cannot tell you exact number. Uh, we are not allowed to tell you. But if you look at those names, okay, you, you can do Google search those names. And the key word is, uh, the key thing is that it's a front office job. Our students don't really do much about operation or back office. Uh, our students, when they get job, they face clients. When you talk about front office job in financial firm, it will pay the highest among all finance job in the finance industry. Uh, I want to point out to, in terms of, uh, how to say, I think David do very well this year. Uh, for example, uh, I'm pretty proud of what he did. Uh, this year, David and another student get job offer from Jane Street. Uh, maybe if you come from high school, you don't know what does it mean, Jane Street. Uh, to me, if my son get I have a son. If my son gets Jane Street, I for sure will tell him to reject Goldman Sachs. Uh, Jane Street is just totally different. Uh, if you want to be a Quan people uh, and you, if you get a job in Jane Street, then that's pretty much it. There's nothing else you should look for. Uh, maybe in terms of career, I would like to let some other year four student talk about it. Uh, so how about uh, uh, Thomas and David? Can you say something about career? Um, David, would you mind going first since your, your company is just being mentioned? Yeah, sure. So I think like in general, most of my friends like are heading towards the finance industry. Like one of the more common pathways in the sales side, I think like investment banking or like sales and trading like in for example professor mentioned Goldman Sachs or like JPM in the PowerPoint slides that's one way so another way uh, for me uh, it's like slightly different I joined on the more quantitative side so I went to Jane Street for like some trading program and there's like on the buy side we need to deal more with like the actual the stock market and all the stuff. So basically, I think the finance industry is the most common pathway for uh, graduate students in Kilfin. Yeah. Thomas, any like? Yeah, I think um, most of our students go to the sell side, like investment banks. So to name a few, there, uh, there are G Goldman Sachs, there are JP Morgan or Morgan Stanley and Credit Suisse. So these are the common names that you might have heard of. But um, actually, there are also many other opportunities out there. So you, you guys are still young, so you might not have heard of buy side. But out there, um, buy side such as uh, there are many fund houses that are classified as buy side. So Wellington Management is one of them. And also there are so Jane Street, actually, you, you could you could argue is buy side as well, because they are managing their own money and trading with their own money. So um, apart from um, getting into investment banks, there are obviously other opportunities out there. So if you if you do your own homework and and try to find out the difference between um, sell side and buy side, that obviously will help your help you to shape your own career path. And I would say the the Qfin program would provide us with enough technical knowledge to master all of these jobs. So in investment banking, you you need to do many um, financial modeling. And for point trading, you need to learn about computer science skills or learn about coding skills. So our program is, our curriculum is comprehensive enough to prepare you for um, most of these jobs. So there is nothing you need to worry about. Yeah, basically like sales is more client facing, for example, and buy side is more like data driven. But I think like our program basically provides enough knowledge for you to like pursue like career in both pathways. Yeah, that's true. So, and I want to tell Thomas that Wellington is actually very good as well. Uh, I'm proud of you. Uh, if my son get Wellington, I will be very excited. Uh, so it's a very good company. And um, uh, what do I want to say? Um, yeah, I forgot, let's see. 
Uh, they just two okay. things to say about the career path or career choice of our students. Uh, you just have to explore a little bit. Oh, and uh, many students asked before, how about actuarial science or risk management for QFIN students? Hey, Thomas, uh, David, do you, uh, Alexis, do you have any comments about that? Sorry, what would the, would the question be? The question is, uh, there's some people asked before, mm -hmm. uh, oh, QFIN, how about, uh, could you do any job in risk management side or actuarial science for, for some insurance company, that kind of stuff? Uh, do you think our QFIN students have ability to do anything about risk? Yes, maybe Alexis can answer it. I think I have done some research assistant positions for the professors in the USD, but I haven't done any RA job for any companies yet. So I, it may be hard for me to comment on that. Okay, so if uh, Thomas and uh, David don't have any comments on this, uh, let me reply to this kind of question. In my opinion, okay, so if you do QFIN and then you want to do something about risk, I think you just take one or two more calls to understand risk and then that's it, you are done, you are ready. Uh, so just like we say earlier, we are the platform to let you do what you want. Uh, if you want to do risk management, then in year four, uh, you just take some high level uh, or some sophisticated risk cost uh, in UST, and then you will be almost the same as study something about the uh, risk in, in some risk related program. And probably you will get A as well, basically. Uh, and same as actuarial science. Uh, I think we have some minor in UST about actuarial science. And if you yeah, take that do. course, it should be fine for you to be ready to, to work uh, in that area. And people who take that course should be afraid of you if you take those course, uh, because you're going to get the A, then that, that will be their, their concern. So what I want to say is that it's not a big problem at all. Uh, be, we are the platform to let you do what you want. Okay, thank you, Professor. So I'm sure we have all learned a bit more about the career prospect of giving students. Now, before we talk about admission related matters, I would like to highlight that people uh, like students whom you are studying with are also very important to your growth. And I'm also glad to have met all my batchmates. Professor, what do you think about uh, our culture of Cuban community is like? Uh, I think a student will be better to answer this kind of question. But in my view, I think our students are very good with each other. And, and I hear from Mickey yesterday, Mickey actually said, your year, Nestor, your year is quite interesting. Your year is very active. Students have very good connection with each other. But uh, with some other years as well, uh, you, I think most of you will be close to each other. And, and how to say we, we, we are kind of inclusive. We, we don't really try to exclude anyone. And uh, we, we always tell our students to help each other because uh, right now you can see uh, in the industry, right? Nobody do things alone. You need a team to succeed. And we always tell our students to work as a team. Uh, so, so, I will let uh, David, uh, Thomas, and Alexis tell, tell a little bit more about our culture and maybe Jocelyn as well because she's yeah. in year three. I think like basically one of the advantages is that like people here in Kofi are basically pretty smart. So it's like quite a good experience to like make friends with smart people. So that's like one thing that's pretty good. So like Besides that one, basically we have quite a lot of like activities, like before COVID, we have quite a lot of activities like to connect students within the Cuban cohort. Like we have some sports day, for example, like professors, students will all together playing some sports for a day. Maybe we'll have some like barbecue, whatever to like, just to make each other closer know each other a bit more and like just to build friendship which i think is like a pretty good experience
Yes, I agree with uh, what the professor said and what David has said, because the Cuban community has always been very supportive to each other. Um, because I know all my Cuban batchmates have very high reputations in the business school for being responsible, academic, competitive, and have very strong solid skills. So they would be my first choice to team up with. So for example, when I was doing research with a USD professor, I found her another two research assistants who happened to, my, to be my Cuban batchmates. So under the professor's consent, we just form a group, form a team to double check each other's data files to ensure that each of us had the correct data results. So besides, we also write a short research proposal together for the professor to comment on just for fun. So I would say Cuban students are always the group of people who you can friend with because of your mutual interest and because they are the smart and nice and they will always be the best teammates. Yeah, I think it's really important to try to know, know the other people in your cohort and try to build friendships because as Akichai has also mentioned, um, no one works on their own nowadays. So everyone has a team to succeed and um, just try to be proactive and know as many people as you, as you, as you can possibly do. And because sometimes even when you're do doing job seeking, you, can, you, you only have one pair of eyes, so you cannot keep track of all the opportunities out there. If you have um, made some friends and you guys are willingly discussing with each other um, what's going on in the market and in the job market specifically, then it will benefit both of you. Yeah, so uh, maybe I can share about my experience when I first meet my uh, Cuban batchmates. They, are, they made me impressed, like how they are outgoing and talkative. Uh, at first I meet like one or two Cuban batchmates and I think, oh, they should be the top at Cuban, such that outgoing students should be at the top. But after that, I meet more and more and I discovered that the whole batch is basically uh, sociable and outgoing, presentable. They are confident in presenting themselves as Cuban students. That impressed me a lot. Yeah, same. Because uh, for the Cuban program, the batch size is quite small, like about 40%, uh, 40, no, number 40. So uh, we actually know uh, everyone of this batch. And actually in uh, year two, we have a course specifically for Cuban students. And that course is an introduction of finance. So we just, all of us will know each other and start doing presentations with each other. So that's a very um, key way for us to learn each other and how, how is the personality of them? And, and it's also a very good uh, pool of smart friends that we can find them to go for some society activities or join some case competitions or interesting programs together. So having a pool of Cuban friends are really great. So maybe um, we can just go on to the admission related matters. And first of all, uh, we can also see many related questions about the interview. So uh, maybe professor or other students, can you um, talk about how the interview is like, like the format or what question did you, were you asked actually in your, in your interview, if you still remember? Yes, of course I remember. I, I, I interview hundreds of people every, every year, uh, but this is one of the questions that I prefer not to answer. Uh, the, the reason is that we want to, to choose the student that is suitable for our program. And if we tell you what we're looking for, then you will pretend to be that kind of person. And I don't want you to pretend to be the people who you are not, you do not want to be. Uh, so it's like two-way matching, right? So like uh, getting married. I'm not going to tell some, someone, oh, this is the one I'm looking for, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to try to find a true match. Uh, I think it's a similar kind of idea. But uh, for our student, Thomas, David, Alexis, uh, Nestor, and Jocelyn, please feel free to tell our candidates how is the interview look like or how, how to prepare for it. Uh, and for the candidate as well, please feel free to approach any of our students to ask about the interview tips, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a little bit different 
you ask me, I don't want to tell you. But if you ask our student, I like it because we want you to practice networking and you want you to be proactive. If you are proactive enough to, to reach our students, then it's okay. Okay, we want you. So, but if you are just lazy or dare not to talk to anyone, then, oh, then, then it's just on you, right? So, so we want to select certain kind of student uh, and then proactive and start to do networking now will be one of the things. So please feel free to ask our student, I don't mind. They can tell you anything they want. So, but for me, I, I prefer not to tell you what I want to ask in the interview. So for interview, I think like it's pretty long ago for me. So it's like the time for me to take the QP interview is like four years ago. So I don't remember too much about it. But I'll say like one thing that's pretty important is just to show your true self. Like if you are really interested in finance, like pretty just showing yourself would be like enough for you to like get. Yeah. I mean like it is important to not to pretend just like what I say because like even if you get the offer it might not be the best for you yeah that's what I want to say I think like master if you two students maybe like have more know a bit more about interview because that is like not too long ago yeah yeah I have some fresh Asia memory of my interview yeah but uh, I wonder if I can share the question I had, Professor. Yeah, yeah, sure, fine. Okay, I, okay. I already so, say you can say whatever you want. I cannot back up, back down now. So. Okay, so <laughs> my interview last year, when I get into USD Cuban, I was surprised that the question was surprisingly simple. I think the question was, uh, which company do you think is the most important in the world? Like, it is not really academic related it is not very in-depth but it shows uh, how much you know about the world economy uh, the macroeconomics etc what is the world's happening and uh, your sense in the business field also and other questions like uh, what uh, what person are you and your strengths your expertise and your interests most importantly like uh, do you like maths do you like programming and if I think it will definitely uh, be great if you have these interests but do not pretend that you know a lot of math before you get in like there's no no advantage to brag about yourself because if you really get into UST by faking your uh, uh, like academic results you will not have a happy life competing with other really good Cuban students. Yeah, so really, uh, interest is very important. Yeah, and I think like any, if yeah. you pretend to be like good at something, then there will be like other people that's more good at something will be able to discover that it's not real. So it's not worth it. Any other Cuban students want to share? I just want to say, yeah, be true to yourself and the way to prepare for interviews is just to read more news because it's very important to follow what's going on in the market. And I think if you are truly interested in, in pursuing a career in finance or studying about finance, you should always read the news and know what's going on. So like, like what Nestor has, has shared, um, he was asked about which, which one is the most important company in the world. So if you have read enough news, you will have, you, you will have your thoughts on that. So that would be the way to prepare for the interview. I, I kind of agree with Thomas. Uh, and especially, I think everyone who already get job and do internship, you would agree with me, right? If you work in finance, you have to read news every day. You don't have any choice. So, so everyone in finance read financial news every day. So, uh, so if you if you had to read those news, then definitely you cannot work in finance. You can just have to find something else to do. Uh, so okay, so there's a lot of information input from the program introduction and panel discussion. But we understand that we may still be missing something, like many questions in the chat box. Uh, you may have some specific questions. So the rest of the time will be used for Q and A. 
Yes, actually, I think I, I have a question that I need your input, uh, need professor and students' input. A student is asking what's the difference between quantitative trading and trading? Yeah, David. Okay. <laughs> I think like trading, you have like quite different types. Like one side is more on the fundamental side. Like uh, if you heard of like Warren Buffett, the, the value investing, there's one kind of trading. But like for uh, basically you want to do is to buy any company that has like a value lower than the intrinsic value, for example, and just hold for like years. But for quantitative trading, that is like a bit different. We do not aim to like value investing. We like try to look for, for example, some market inefficiency, like some mispricing of products in some specific times. So yeah, I think, if you like check the Cuban program, you'll know more about it, but there's like some brief introduction that I can give about it. Yeah, so please remember that you can raise your hand, we'll call on you and you can just directly speak up and you can also uh, type your question in the chat and we'll just directly answer it in real time. I think someone also asked about um, the exchange curriculum. Can maybe Thomas share about more? Like what do you study during your exchange? Um, for exchange curriculum, it varies on different schools. So um, for, for some of the schools, they have different courses to offer. And we have a very comprehensive database that you can check before you apply which, which school you want to exchange at. So. Um, so that, I think that would be something that is more concerning to you after you get into QFIN, then, then you can start to, to do some homework on that. But for now, I would say focus more on whether, whether QFIN is really the, the program you want to get in. So I got two more questions. One is, um, so would you comment some difference between GBUS and QFIN courses? Like how can the programming or math knowledge help us to better understand the economy? Yeah, I think that um, for GBUS courses, they focus a lot more on presentation skills. So they have a lot of courses that, that require a huge amount of time on making PowerPoint slides. And then they do weekly um, sharing or presentation on the topic that they're studying. But for us, QFIN, I think most of our courses are focuses more on um, technical skills like coding or like mathematics. So it's more hardcore if you, if you know the underlying concept of it, of the courses, or if you know, um, if you're familiar with the knowledge, with the, um, for example, with the with the way to calculate that to get to the answer, you will do well, um, in Kilvin courses. But if you if you consider yourself as a more talkative person or as someone who wants to do more presentation, then you might find the GBUS courses more interesting. So, um, we are very different, but it depends on. So, so that's why Ekachai has reminded you guys that um, just be true to yourself. Do not have to fake your personalities. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. Add, okay, Thomas, I want to add that uh, if you are good at presentation, we also want you, okay? Yeah, I, I, want, I just wanted to <laughs> add on that point. So, you don't have to be fake to be not good at presentation. If you mean, are good at presentation, it's a big plus, like really big plus. Okay, yeah. so uh, uh, we want, okay, in chat, uh, many people ask us what kind of student we are looking for. Uh, in chat, I will say, we're looking for people who are good at everything, if we can. So, so but if you, if you are not good at everything, we still want you if you, fit a certain criteria, but uh, if we can choose a perfect student, we'll be the one who good at everything. And, and we, we at least want our student to be that way in year four. When they reach year four, we want our student to be good at everything. Although when they were in year one, maybe they are just more like one dimensional, but uh, they use three years to develop. And I really truly believe that our year four students, they are very good. Yeah, that's right. Many, many Cuban students are also very presentable. So 
but I would say our courses will give you the opportunity to learn about technical skills that GBUS courses cannot offer you. So, uh, Vicky, do you have another question? Um, so, th actually, there's a question related to admission. I will, uh, I think I will leave it for the admission team to answer it. Like, um, the admission rate of uh, international qualification level. Okay, so yeah. uh, may I ask a personal question for uh, for Alexis and David because I am considering to take an additional major and I heard that if you take extra 20 credits, your GPA will be dragged down a bit. So is that the general case that inevitably my academic will be, uh, yeah? Uh, actually, I don't think that is the case. So uh, first of all, which major do you want to take, Master? Uh, math, like math. analysis. Yeah, okay. I think like, it really depends, right? So, I mean, towards the uh, more like the 4,000 level courses, for example, they were going to be more difficult, but like all other, the difficulty applies to like every student. So I don't think like particularly these will drag your scores down. Yeah. Yeah, can I ask Nastor what kind of math courses are you taking now? Uh, I took some uh, calculus courses in year one and I want mm -hmm. to declare uh, pure math track in the following years. Mm, yeah, yeah. If you want to declare for a pure math, then I think starting from your next year, then you have to do multi valuable calculus, right? Or yes. you have already taken it, then you should take the math 2023 instead, because that is a course decided for math major students. So you can try to take that to see if you can like catch up then you can decide because I think that most the difficult part for the math major is that you need, to, you need to take analysis course. So that includes real analysis, mathematical analysis, numerical analysis, complex analysis. Uh, for the real analysis and math, mathematical analysis, those courses you have to take. And lots of students report that they find it most difficult. So maybe you can try to take these courses first to have a taste in it. Okay, sure. So any questions? Maybe I can add on a bit on that. Actually, uh, if you are interested in a specific area, you do not have to like declare that as your major, but you can also take some minors like Professor Kachan mentioned. Like we have a lot of minors like in arts or in actuarial science, aeros uh, a lot of things. And actually I'm also taking a minor in psychological and behavioral science because I was a little bit interested in psychology, but I do not plan to be a psychologist at all. So um, having the quantitative finance program and also economics and a psychology related minor so I think uh, this combination com combination actually makes my skill very comprehensive from the technical side um, to the soft skills side and also as um, some student asked about the GBUS program actually um, all the students from the GBUS program and quantity finance program are very top performing students. And instead of like really comparing each other, uh, many times they actually cooperate with each other. Like during a case competition or doing some projects, we actually need different types of person with like different personalities or skill sets. So it's great to know your own batchmates and also uh, students from other majors. Okay, so uh, if we do not have any questions left? Thank you all for uh, joining us today and attending this live talk. If you have any further questions, you can visit our program booth before 8 p.m. And if you have any questions later on, you can email us through uh, fina at usd.hk. Yeah, or like you can search our Instagram, maybe. If you can, if you know us personally, you can feel free to ask any or other Cuban students at the USD. Okay, so I want to advise you on how to find USD students. Uh, basically, uh, you can just go to LinkedIn and then you just search HKUST Cuban and then you just message them and then you say, oh, you are interested 
And let's see if you can get any response from our students. And if you do that, then I think it will be very good for you. Uh, you know, LinkedIn, right? Uh, just go on LinkedIn. Search for USTQ fin, and then just send them a direct message. If you send 10 messages, I think someone will reply to you and then it will be a good experience for you. Oh, there's uh, one more question in the chat box. So what characteristics do you think it will be suitable to study at finance? I would say outgoing and detail-minded. I would say do not give up so easily. I mean, job in finance and you give up so easily, it will be, <laughs> the chance to succeed is very low because uh, in finance, uh, you're going to get rejected so many times. So like a, of our student, I think many of you get rejected at least 50 times, right? Maybe 100 times. You have to keep going and then be optimistic and don't give up easily. So if you if you are too stressful about get rejection, then maybe you cannot do finance job. Let's be optimistic and try to be your best. I think I don't see new questions from the chat. Maybe we can really end this session, right, Miki? Yeah. So, uh, so uh, if uh, student, if you really have uh, any question or further question to ask, you can visit our booth. We will still have uh, some QFIN student representative there to answer your questions. Yes. Yeah, so, if uh, no more, then we will end the section. Thank you for joining, and thank you for the student speakers. Thank you to MCs. You do, you you guys do very well. Thank you so okay, much. thanks everyone. Uh, so I'm glad that we have this session. Uh, yeah, thank you.